Welcome everyone to the 2022 Grantham School District meeting. I know it's past 6.30, I wanted to get started uh, and hopefully we can, we can, hopefully we can, is that better? Welcome and I would like to get started since it's past 6.30. Um, I hope that uh, we can finish the check-in process over here shortly. The meeting having been, having been duly warned, um, we are now open for business. I would first like to um, recognize uh, Brittany Pye to introduce the Grantham School Board to you. Thank you, welcome everyone. Tonight with us for the Grantham School Board, we have Christine Conroy, our Grantham School Board Secretary. We have Ed Upson. We have Leslie Nesbitt, the Grantham School Board Vice Chair. I am Brittany Pye. I am the Chair of the Grantham School Board. Joining us in the front here, we also have Sydney Leggett, our Superintendent. Stephen Whitney, our Attorney. We have Karen Lassard, the Business Administrator for the District. We have Kristen Reed, principal of Grantham Village School. We also have um, Brenda Malloy, and we would like to recognize Carl. And then we also have Emily Owens, who is the district clerk who is just walked in. Good timing. Okay. So we are all here. Um, the first item on the agenda is Article 1, which I just want to explain the procedure. This is a bond vote. And as described in the article itself, uh, we will vote for this with a paper ballot. What we're going to do when we vote is we're gonna deposit either the yes or the no half of the white ballot into the box over there. That will only happen after I announce that the ballot box is open and that ballot box will remain open for one hour. So that's the procedure that we will use. And in order to pass the bond vote, uh, it requires uh, a three fifths uh, vote in favor of all those who are casting a ballot. Okay. So article one, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $700,000 gross budget for the renovation of the Grantham Village School Playground and to authorize the issuance of not more than 700,000 of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act and to authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to, de to determine the date maturities, interest rate, and other details of such bond or notes, and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $17,500 for the first year's debt service payment on such bond or notes, and to authorize the school board to accept on behalf of the school district any federal, state, or private funds that may become available to fund the project and to use such funds to reduce the amount of bonds or notes issued for the project or to make debt service payments on such bonds or notes. This is an article which is recommended by the Grantham School Board. And as I said earlier, it requires a three fifths ballot vote to pass. Is there a motion with respect to article one? So moved. It's been moved by Brittany Pye. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So, um, I believe at this point, the school board will have uh, ha has some material to present to us regarding the school playground. So we'd like to start the presentation regarding the grounds renovation and playground bond just with a moment to say thank you to the Grantham community um, for being our collaborators and our partners. Oh. We're gonna, oh, there we go, I'm back. 
um, <laughs> and our partners in this process, uh, both in this playground process, but also just generally through the last year and two years. Um, this is just a chance for us to say thank you to the parents who have collaborated and communicated with us, um, for the staff who continues to inspire our children and build resilience um, with them, and to our community members, all of you who support us um, financially and support us with your generosity of time and donations, feedback, input, all of those things. So specifically throughout this process, we've had community members that have been very generous with their time um, and their financial resources as we've raised money. Um, and we just wanna take a moment to express our gratitude to all of you for that. We have new microphones, so can everybody hear me? Okay, so um, I'm gonna give a very brief overview of what you'll be looking at in terms of Article 1. A brief history of the project is during the 2008 renovation, uh, some of the biggest concerns for this space was um, were related to drainage problems and then the play space generally not serving the needs of all students. There was about a $200,000 surplus in the building project at that time, and it was considered to do some work in this area, but it was held off because um, there wanted to be coordination with the building of the rec park at the same time. In 2012, um, the work that was done included some drainage, irrigation, the fields, and the current structure, which used approximately 125,000 of the remaining renovation funds with leaving about 75,000 remaining, which has earned a little bit of interest since then. The more current history, the origins of our proposed project tonight was that this was an identified need in our 2017 strategic plan. Based on estimates of other playground projects and anticipated drainage and site work costs, the board proposed a bond for $500,000 last year that wound up failing by 21 votes. After that, we went out into the community to reach out to see what people needed to move forward with this project. And there were three main concerns that arose consistently. One was a desire to see an actual plan and a design um, prior to the vote. Two was to see the expected breakdown of all costs related to that plan. And three was that the prioritization last year was definitely the fire truck for the town. Since last March, we've released two RFPs that have been completed. The first is a site survey, and this is gonna be the basis on which we can move forward with all designs. And we also contracted with SE Group uh, to do a design and engineering uh, and a design and engineering firm that can created the conceptual design that you'll see tonight. So this is our existing site, uh, the survey of the space on GVS. So I'm sure you're all familiar with it. When we looked at the site survey, it was completed to determine the basic layout of the usable space. It confirmed the locations of the septic leach fields, current drainage, irrigation systems in conjunction with a septic assessment. Our septic is in really good shape, so that was good news. Um, it looked at how we can fix our drainage issues in the design plan, and some of that you can see here. Uh, did soil assessments, identified remedies for the septic smell that some of you may be familiar with, and uh, the, this is gonna be our premise for all permitting going forward with the project. We went through a pretty extensive process to identify the needs and priorities here. So there were multiple opportunities involving staff, students and parent community group sessions to provide input and feedback, going through more of an iterative process. So we had open sessions, surveys, and SE group came here to do on-site work with our students. Throughout all of this, um, there were regular sessions with our GVS grounds renovation and playground committee along along the whole path to get here. These are the identified needs and priorities that came out of that process. Mitigating the drainage issues was number one, allowing for the extension of all season play, trying for less time closing structures during freezing temperatures and opening up op other opportunities, um, which has actually been particularly significant these past two weeks. Uh, there was identified a, an equipment need for bigger kids, especially grades three through six, and especially climbing. Uh, climbing came back 
strongly from all groups, from parents, students, and staff. We uh, are prioritizing ADA accessibility for all students. So our design includes ways for all students of multiple abilities to access every part of the playground. A commitment to GVS and Grantham values of a connection to the outdoors, sustainability, and outdoor learning through play. An increased importance of outdoor time now and in the future. And uh, we heard from people about trying to remedy what people referred to as somewhat of a disconnect between our current GVS facility, the quality of education, and the existing playground. So the design process was finalized at the end of this, um, at the end of all of these stages, and two concepts came forward. There was a concept A or B, and as you can imagine, people wanted concept C. <laughs> so um, when we combined elements of both, concept C wound up being a total estimate of 1.3 million. The committee did not feel comfortable putting forward that amount to the community, and we worked with the design firm cutting things back to what we felt was essential to meet those identified priorities and needs. And we reduced the cost by $500,000, leaving us with a total project cost of $820,000. This is what the, exist, what the design is going to look like. So this is the combination of A plus B. So if you're looking at the school up here, all of you drove in this way on Learning Drive. The main elements here are that we are going to have two main play areas, one targeting more K through two students over here with appropriate equipment, appropriate landscape, et cetera, for them on that side. And on this side, it would be targeted more towards grade three through six. Um, you can see here, the ADA walkway or sort of a track as we're calling it, that would be able to go from every part of the playground to another part. And over here, we heard a lot of feedback about wanting not just equipment, about wanting to use the natural landscape um, for play, for natural play, for outdoor play. So this entire area is open space, which also has kind of some some hills and structures in terms of the landscape here that build up to a hill. And you can see that the path goes up this way so that the path is also ADA accessible to the hill. The hill on this side will have a slide going down, climbing on the other side, but this opens up a lot of other opportunities in the winter for things like sledding, which our students absolutely love to do. And we love to have them outside all year long. If we move over to this side, um, we do recommend the removal of the tennis courts, which will open up a second field over here. So this could be, for example, a soccer pitch or a second field. And what this allows us to do specifically is this allows us to have kids outside for recess and PE class at the same time. So we can have kids on the structures using this space or even this space, and we can have a whole other group or a grade level of students out at the same time. Um, the last area that I, well, two final areas that I want to point out is we have the basketball court over here, but we're actually extending it so that there are two four square courts and one of the designs didn't have a gaga pit in it and our students were outraged. Um, so the gaga pit has been put back in, of course, right there. <laughs> Um, and then this area over here we're pretty excited about and you probably already heard about it, but right here is going to be an outdoor pavilion that is being, 75% um, of it is being donated by Yankee Barn. And we will um, talk a little bit more about that in the rest of the presentation. But eating outside and then having snack outside and having class outside is something that we did much more during the pandemic. And it's something that we don't wanna stop. Um, we have currently spent $31,000 on tent rentals to do this, which is not a good, use of our grant funds right now. So the pavilion is not only a great addition to the school, a great fit in the playground design, but it is also much more cost effective for us in the future. Okay, moving forward. So the breakdown of costs is for site work, which is going to include 
demolition, drainage, excavation, grading, paving, landscaping, and the blankets underneath all the structures for student safety is gonna to come to about $318,273. The equipment itself, which is the play equipment bike rack plus installation is about $312,527. Permitting, legal, and clerk of the works costs come to about 17,500. The design and engineering costs are estimated to be 50,700. Contractor markup is estimated to be 60,500 and contingency of 60,500. For our fundraising efforts and donations, this is gonna be my favorite slide tonight, I have to tell you. So in 2019, uh, the community supported a warrant article to fund $50,000 to start this work. The GVS Grounds Renovation and Playground Committee made a commitment to match that amount. We made it today. <laughs> um, we had a final coin drive and I brought the coins to the bank and I knew we were getting close and when I went to the bank with all these coin jars, Bar Harbor Bank gave us a check for $1,000. Um, and that put us over, that put us over the 50,000. So that brings our current fundraising total to $50,561.81. And we've reached our goal, but reaching that $50,000 goal was really important to us because we have a commitment from the Byrne Foundation that when we reach $50,000, they will give us another 10. So we actually made it to $60,561 today. So thank you to everybody. I know this was a huge effort to do this fundraising, but we made it. <laughs> We're not gonna stop fundraising, but I know we all had it in our minds that it was a, a goal that we really wanted to meet before tonight and we did it. So um, the pavilion project will proceed this summer regardless of the bond vote, basically because the tent rentals are not cost effective. And we've also received incredibly generous donations, as I mentioned, from Bar Harbor, Sugar River, Field and Sons, and Kennebec Lumber. So the overall project cost to date, this includes all funds current and anticipated. So the site survey and the design engineering process was a cost of approximately 41,500. The anticipated project costs are 820,000 reaching a total of 861,500. The fundraising plus the what we have in our trust accounts reaches 161,500. The bond amount is 700,000, which brings us to that 861,500. In terms of a bond proposal, we did look at a 10 versus a 20 year. Um, the 10 year provides us with a savings of 142,500. So we're moving forward with a 10 year bond. Currently the offer is a 2% interest. Uh, so the total interest paid would be 87,500. The last bond actual sale rate when it came in was 1.41%, which was the January sale. Looking at tax impact. So in each year, it's actually, even though it's a 10 year bond, we only pay interest in the first year. So we're looking at 11 years. The first year is three cents per thousand. We move into four years of 15 cents per thousand, another four years of 14 cents per thousand and two final years of 13 cents per thousand. The median home price in Grantham right now is 400,000. So the numbers in parentheses here are what the tax impact would be in dollars on a $400,000 home. So it comes out to just over about a dollar a week. So $60 for the first four years, or you know, years uh, two, three, four, and five, moves to $56 and then $52 the year after that. We do still currently have a bond open on the 2008 renovation. So there are six more years of payments on that bond. It will be finished in 28, 29. So this gives you an overview of the time that the district would be responsible for two bonds. And then when we get to 2930, the, big, the bigger bond from 2008 would drop off and we would be paying off just the, the bond that you're voting on tonight. 
In terms of overlap with other warrant articles, I'm sure that you're all familiar with the um, reprieve regarding the sweat tax this year. So if, our, if all articles pass, there's still a tax rate decrease of four cents per thousand, but we do wanna note that SWEPT is expected to return to its normal funding next year. This is a one-year reduction only. The main benefits to children, I won't read all of this to you because there's a lot on here, but the main benefits to children in terms of um, the physical benefits is the heart and cardiovascular health in terms of jumping, climbing, running, pulling, balancing, et cetera, general school activity, um, lifelong activity, climbing. We talked about specifically came back and all of the things that that does for kids and the increase in brain function, um, which makes learning better. So this all goes together in our minds here at school. The main benefits to children in terms of social and emotional um, concerns uh, the playground is a place for a lot of collaboration and cooperation. There's a lot of confidence building from challenging themselves. There's innovative and creative play. We really like how the design represents a balance of open space and equipment, a little bit of both. Life skills, which I like to refer to as playground politics. There's a lot of diplomacy and conflict resolution learned on the playground. And there's definitely community value and the value that we have as a community in terms of acceptance and inclusion in the way that kids play together. And pandemic recovery, it's a nice place for stress reduction, some normalcy and some fun. In terms of benefits to the community, um, obviously the benefits to the children of the community for all the reasons we just listed. It's a continued capital investment in a great school for both property value and community value. It will be finally remedying some ongoing concerns such as the outdated equipment, the lack of ADA access and the drainage and septic issues. The changes will help maximize the use of this resource, which is something that we always try to do with our resources. Uh, it's an additional public space on nights and weekends for families to play and gather for community and school event space. And we do have adv really advantageous interest rates that likely won't last. It's a great time to actually interest-wise financially take out a bond. So it's a good financial timing and a good opportunity that way. And we do have, is Carrie Post here? Okay, <laughs> here you go. So as we close the presentation on the grounds and renovation playground bond, the board would like to just take a moment to publicly express our gratitude to Yankee Barn Homes, to Paul Marinelli and Carrie Post, who is with us tonight. Um, thank you so much for your generous donation and your partnership with the district on the construction of the outdoor pavilion. Thank you on behalf of the board, the GVS community, and most importantly, on behalf of our students. Um, your continued partnership with and your support of the Grantham community will allow generations of GBS students to enjoy learning, gathering, and playing in the outdoors in new and meaningful ways. This pavilion will be a gathering point, not just for the school community, but for the wider Grantham community as well. From students in school to scouting group activities to family picnics in the summer months, the possibilities there are endless. Um, to quote your own philosophy at Yankee Bar and Homes, we build homes that embrace beauty, flexibility, energy efficiency, and comfort. And we would like to thank you for helping us to expand those values at GVS in our outdoor gathering spaces. So thank you so much, and we're excited for the work to begin. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's the explanation of the project. Um, I wanna give the, uh, the meeting an opportunity to ask any questions or comments about this before we move. Are there any comments? You just push need the to button. push the button. Right push the green button. David Wood, uh, 103 Road Around the Lake. Um, 
first, I want to compliment the uh, committee and the board on the work you've done. It's obviously extensive and very thoughtful. Thank you. Um, I have two sort of historic questions. First, uh, what was done with the 125,000 that was spent in 2012? And why was that insufficient to resolve the drainage problem? <clears throat> the second question uh, concerns the pavilion. And uh, I think we all appreciate the donation that Yankee Barn has made. I think that's wonderful. But I wonder to what extent the Gail Schmidt um, pavilion is utilized. Is that adequately utilized? And why is a second outdoor space required? I'm happy to address both of those. Um, first of all, the 125,000 for the work in 2012 was, uh, was great. It was money well spent. It just didn't address all of the drainage issues. So we're actually not taking away any of the drainage that was installed there. What we're doing is we need to add to it where we still have areas of continued concern. And in the design that the engineering group did, we will be able to use the landscaping and additional drainage to hopefully solve the problems that, we're, that are still existing. So we're actually not taking anything away from that 2012 project, we're building on it. And then the second question is, um, the Gail Schmidt classroom is wonderful and it is used and our classes love starting there and then heading out into the woods. It's um, just not size-wise big enough to have even one class eat lunch in there. Um, so it's really about being able to have the capacity to have not just you know, one class, but potentially like three or four classes or several grade levels eating at the same time. It just size-wise isn't big enough. Thank you. That I would just add to that. One of the things that we also learned during the pandemic is the importance of, of true open air spaces. Yeah. And the outdoor classroom is an enclosed space. So during um, the last two years, it hasn't been able to be used in the same way that a pavilion would because of the airflow that will come through because the pavilion is really gonna just provide a roof shelter, whereas the outdoor classroom does have walls to it. On a stamper, um, corner of Dunbar Hill Road and Old Farms Road. I wrote this down so I would be um, concise. So I would also like to thank you for the work you guys have done putting this together after last year's um, presentation. I think you provided much more detail and transparency. So thank you for that. Um, I was, however, a little surprised about by the fact that the septic is fine. And last year, my understanding was, which may have been wrong, was that the septic was part of the plan and a vital part of the plan. Um, so, and I also appreciate the fact that you chose not to present a project of a million plus dollars. <laughs> Um, and you came up with the plan for 820,000, which is still more than three quarters of a million for a playground. I think, however, that we should discuss the difference between wants and needs. Um, here tonight and with our students and specifically how people finance those specific wants and needs. Um, and the fact that it's not just a family here in town with the school, but there's a whole town here that we're trying to work together to provide a good education for our kids. Um, I do feel that we need an ADA playground and I support that. Um, I would like to know the breakdown of the costs involved in that specific part of this plan. I'd also like to know the breakout of the cost of the site work, which you sort of answered that question. I think that now is not the time to be choosing to spend this much money on something that we can control when there are so many costs related to the school that we can't control and that are essentially unpredictable. Um, I worry about those 
um, going forward those costs that we can't control. I also do not think that it's wise to be doubling up on two loan payments at the same time for six years. Um, I know we're all experiencing the prices at the grocery store and the gas pump and heating our houses. Um, so I really feel that this is not the right time for this much money spent on this playground. I feel that it's time to kind of tighten our belts and not get ourselves in more long-term debt. I also think that this kind of a huge project is not needed as there are plenty of recreation opportunities just outside our doors or close by. I imagine most of the students in the school live in Eastman and have access to a lot of those spaces where they live. I also imagine that there are plenty of kids who are being driven to after school activities such as ballet, gymnastics, other things that they exercise their bodies to do, sports, skiing. Um, the rec park also has an excellent spot for kids to play. And I've enjoyed seeing families playing there together. I don't want you to get me wrong. I am proud to have a Blue Ribbon School and have supported this school for many, many years. Um, I want our students to thrive. I just don't think we need a blue ribbon playground, just a safe and usable one. I'll give you my comment. Thank you. Would, would anyone else like to? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, Lori McClory, 38 Brookridge Drive. I just have two really quick questions. I hope they're quick. One, the sculpture garden that's out here staying. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And two, um, the tennis courts. Are there tennis courts at the Shed Road fields? So the town won't have any tennis courts at all. I'm just asking a question. Okay, thank you very much. Um, could I could I ask you to speak closely into the microphone? It, it's a little hard to hear. Okay, Lynn Hill, 53 Bright Slope. Nice to see you all. Um, so my kids went to this school, and I would like to see a Blue Ribbon Playground. Um, I've heard it said that our children should be well-educated, well-fed, and well-exercised every single day at school. Um, and a lot of the kids do not get exercise opportunities after school um, because of their parents' schedules or weather, or whatever. So I would like to see this playground go through. Um, I came in thinking it sounded like a lot of money. I don't know if you can easily pull up that slide for a $400,000 house. Sure. But it appeared to me that for each of us, for, you know, depending on the price of your house, it's one tank of gas, it's one dinner out, or it's a single carton of cigarettes. Is that correct, 56 bucks? So I think a lot of people in the room would be willing to give up that carton of cigarettes or that dinner out, or maybe not take a few trips. Um, it's not a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of money, it's not. Thank you. Hello, and, my name is Adrian Dominicucci, 39. And, and, and pl please get real close to the mic. It's, <laughs> we're, 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 you're, you're, okay. you know, you're, you're talking to people on Zoom also, so yeah. Uh, oh, my mask on. Sorry. Hi, Adrian Dominicucci, 39 Hummingbird Hill. Um, a lot has already been said, what I was, which I was going to say, so I love that. Um, I guess I want to speak for the kids a little bit from what I hear what they say. And um, for those of you who have students that go here, you do know that, um, or probably have heard that they can't go outside. And we alluded to this a little bit in the meeting that the playground's covered in ice 
a lot of the time. So it's not just that the ground's frozen under the play structure, it's that the drainage and all those problems cause us not to even be able to go outside. So when the sun is shining and it's gorgeous and 60, a couple of days ago, they were all inside. So we don't really have the place for play. And those numbers, even though they sounded high, which they really didn't, because it is like the, the meal, I love that, like, you know, explanation. It's not for the play structures themselves. If you think about it, there's gonna be no playground without ground that functions well. And that's how I like to wrap my head around it. The kids need to get outside. It's part of who they are. It's part of education, period. And um, we can't cart them to the rec center and they can't go here and there. They're here on grounds and we got to make the ground functional to build the playground. So it's not the playground that costs so much. It's the whole project. And in the long run, it's not that much for our kids. So, and I'm... Um, really stoked about the pavilion because it is for everybody and the walking little loop that's there like yeah the rec center is awesome but this is just more awesome thank you hi my name is phil schaefer i live at 16 summit uh, I have, have two items. One, though, for those of you who think it's not very expensive, it's because of the numbers of people involved. <clears throat> if you look at the cost per student, it's close to $4,000 per student. That's not been disclosed or shared. And I'd like to ask, I, I like to see good presentations and the, the section on main benefits to children is, it, is an important one. I'd like to know from you what of those benefits is not available currently. I think one of the things that Grantham Village School does is provide opportunities for those benefits. And I think, you know, if we're, I think, looking at the list of the physical and the social emotional benefits, we absolutely find ways to offer those benefits with what we have, with the resources we have. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't also see that there are room for, room for improvements on those. So are you saying all the benefits are already here? Um, the only thing I, sorry, the only thing I would add to that is we do have some of those benefits, not all of them, uh, but they're limited because of the amount of time that we actually can't use the playground. So I don't know, Mrs. Reed, how much has the, how much have we had to close the playground recently? So for example, all last week, I think someone in the audience mentioned it, it was closed all last week. It went from being an ice skating rink to a pond back to an ice skating rink. Um, and in fact, today we opened it but I'm not quite sure we did have some injuries based on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it is closed a lot during the winter because of that and kids have to stay inside and there are PE classes happening during that time. So kids are staying in their classrooms during that time. Yeah. And the other things that we are missing right now are um, climbing and the ADA aspects are missing from the list that you're talking about. I I'm co confused about what you're saying. Do you think you're going to be able to change the weather patterns with this change? You're still going to have snow. It's the drainage. Yeah. So it's got to get warm for it to drain, right? Or we're not going to be heating the ground. I can I can take it. So um, in the design, we know that we know that we live in New England, we live in New Hampshire, and there's probably still going to be times where things have to be closed because I think that's inevitable, um, just based on where we've chosen to live. But um, the way that the design is, is that we have opened up more access to opportunities during the winter. For example, the track that's going around the path will open up access to other parts of the playground. The design from the engineering firm is using the landscaping. So hopefully we won't have as much ice buildup in certain areas. And the way that they designed the equipment that would go in with the blankets is um, underneath is we should be able to, um, because of the way that the elevation works, we should be able to keep those open longer than we normally would be able to. 
and the way that the circulation happens with those opportunities because circulation and having all of the drainage issues concentrated in one place right now, when we open up the circulation issues to be spread out around the playground, that's going to help as well. So, you know, we can't say that this means the playground will never be closed again, um, but we can say that this is going to extend the time that it's open and the opportunities that the kids can have during the winter months. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would you like to have the question? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Sarah Walsh, Nine Alpine Vista. So I have two seven-year-olds and a nine-year-old. And one of my questions for the board is, and my nine-year-old's tiny, is they are already completely bored of playground here, all the playgrounds in Eastman, in kind of the rec park, it's, we don't get there as much, but they still find it pretty boring. Um, and obviously you guys can't be transporting kids to squam to play on their climbing wall and their balance beams and everything else. What is the thought of the age range of our current playground in terms of, I know that like some of the fourth graders or third graders can touch the bar. Um, what is the thought about what developmental age our playground is for? That was part of splitting into those two. We have the K through two and then more of the three through six, because right now our current playground isn't meeting the needs of the older kids. Um, and we hear that loud and clear from the kids is that um, there's not enough for them to do. So this is going to really target that three through six area for the bigger kids to give them the what they need and the challenges and then open up sort of like those natural hill areas and everything so that they can still do all the other things that they love. And if the bond were approved tonight, do we have a guesstimation of when the playground would be ready or in what sections? So we're probably going to have to do it in two different phases because um, we have alteration of terrain permitting that we have to go through because we have more than 50,000 uh, square feet that we're working with. So we would most likely try and phase it out where we would focus on the priority, which is the three to six playground area the pavilion and maybe what else we can try and get in there. And then we would probably work on um, where the courts and the tennis courts and fields are and the rest of the project in summer of 23. And I just wanna say thank you because if my kids get more exercise, my sanity will improve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, uh, David Christie, 18 Shore Road. I have a question. How old is the current equipment uh, that's out there? 2012. Okay. Uh, it was said in the literature that some of the stuff was added in 2006 and the rest is much older. So I, I thought it was older than that. Um, I, the last that I checked, it was the 2012 project. Okay. And somebody who has been here might be able to say if something different happened. But I believe that the so we don't even have the full structure that we had originally because actually pieces of, we've had to take out um, yeah. because they were breaking. So does somebody from the audi audience know better? Lynn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sorry, it's not possible for everybody to hear you unless you get up so to the mic. It's okay, my, my point is I think that when you, 2006. Six. Okay. So, and, Thank you. And the, I guess, what's the expected useful life of the new equipment? Equipment. It's estimated to be the Right. So when you want to think about the per student cost of an investment like this, you can't just take the number of current students and divide it, the bond by it, because it's going to be benefit the community and all of our students for 30 years, mm -hmm. ostensibly. So that's really important. And um, I have a you know, a, a first grader and a fourth grader in the system. And I'm, I'm like, I'm really afraid that my fourth grader is gonna go through his entire elementary school experience without having a proper playground space because it's been like this since, you know, ever for me. And I just think that as a community, we, we have a really great school district and that's because we've all as Grantham and as a community agreed that we should invest in it. And um, outside space and outside time is incredibly valuable for children. We all know this. And so I just, I want to put in my two cents that I think it's a great investment and thank you. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the article? And, and please approach the mic closely. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ray Miner. I'm at 244 Walker Road. Um, I'd like to say um, it looks like a lot of um, planning has gone into this design. Um, and I do agree that, uh, you know, um, outdoor activity is important for kids and their development. My main question here is what have we done for due diligence for the actual cost and proposals? I see one proposal here. Has this been put out to bid? And have we received more than one? So it went out to bid in terms of the design and engineering. And then if the bond is approved, any construction will go out to bid. Okay, very good, thank you. Andy Gelston, 17 Bouldervale Road. Uh, I was looking at that, that lovely drawing and I noticed there's walkways meandering around and I would recommend instead of putting walkways in that you just sod it over and then let the kids feet decide where the walkways should eventually go. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nicole Mason from 464 Burpee Hill Road. I've been subbing at the school this year um, regularly at fifth and sixth grade recess. And I want to say that I'm really excited to see more options of, for play in the winter because some days, even when we can't or when, when we're able to go outside, the snow is too hard to play with, but too slick to do any kind of running games on. And the only thing that the kids can do is sledding several days out of the winter, many days. And the sledding hill is very short. And also there's no flat space at the top to set a sled down. So the kids are trying to hang onto the chain link fence as they're getting on their sled. And then they let go to go down the hill. So I'm really excited to see an actual sledding hill with a flat space on top to do some real sledding and also more options in the winter when they can't use the fields for running games like football um, and baseball. Thank you for letting me speak. Pam Hanson, 20 Route 114. Um, I wrote a letter when the tennis courts were first put in many years ago about the drainage. So I know it's an issue. It's been an issue for decades since my children were at this school. And I'm in favor of fixing it. My question is about the cost of replacing the tennis courts which are being removed and putting them somewhere else and the baseball field. Um, it's been a while since my kids were in school, so I don't know what the current use is, but my memory is that all of the baseball fields everywhere in Grantham were always booked solid during the playing season, including what Eastman was willing to share with the town. So my question is, in the overall cost of this project, um, has there been some coordination with the town for the cost of replacing those facilities which are being eliminated here? And I understand that it's a good idea to design the, the facilities here for the use of the school itself and not necessarily the outside town uses. Do you want me to or do I take it? Thank you for the question. Um, and we have um, spoken with the town and um, with the Grantham Recreation on the use. Um, we also did uh, collect some information from fo folks on current use of how often different facilities are being used. Um, and I would say one of the things that we are seeing is that um, the, the space at the school was not being used for um, contests for things like baseball. Um, that really has migrated to the facilities at the recreation park, and those are pretty sufficient for what they need. 
the space at the school was used much more for some of the lower grades for recreation for things like soccer practice and part of the that the design that we have is that space that's occupying where the tennis courts are now could be a multi-use space for those groups for recreation to still use for some of those practices for some of the lower level grades who may not be at the competition level um, whereas the competitions are happening more at the recreation park we did not gather a great deal of data of folks who are were currently using the tennis courts um, and so that's certainly something that we would need to, you know, we would would want to work with Grantham Recreation um, to find out more information on use for the tennis courts. I will say the tennis courts that we have, folks who are serious tennis players do not want to use these courts. <laughs> they are not um, at a, they are not maintained to a level of um, like other courts in town, uh, maybe. Are there other questions or are you ready for the, for the question? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just gonna reiterate that what we're gonna do is use the white ballot that you should have gotten when you checked in and you're gonna deposit either the yes or the no, half of that little white sheet of paper into um, into the ballot box, which is marked over here. Okay, thank you, Brenda. Um, and uh, that ballot box will remain open for one hour starting now. And we can continue to do other business. We can get on to article two or three or whatever we can get to uh, while the ballot box is still open. But I'm going to give everybody a chance now and then the next 10 or 15 minutes to go and deposit their, their vote for Article 1 now. The rest of the meeting. Uh, until 8.28. So the next item on the agenda is Article 2, which is to hear the reports of agents, committees, and other officers heretofore chosen and to pass any vote related thereto. Um, is there a motion from the floor to pass Article 2? Anyone? We have, we have a motion and, and a second. You got those? <laughs> State your name. Jeff Walla and so all of the reports of the agents, committees, and other officers are contained in this annual report that you've already picked up. There aren't any there aren't any votes to be taken with respect to those, but you are uh, encouraged to, to read them. Um, I don't believe there's any discussion with respect to Article 2. Um, anyone wish to speak to Article 2? In which case, I will ask for a voice vote. If you're in favor of adopting Article 2, please signify by saying aye. aye. If you are opposed, please say nay. And Article 2 is adopted unanimously. Moving on to Article 3, the main operating budget. To see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate this amount of $10,203,736 for the support of schools, for the payment of salaries of the school district officials and agents, 
and for the payment of statutory obligations of the district and to authorize the application against such appropriations of such sums as are estimated to be received from state and federal governments together with other income, the balance to be raised by taxation of the school district. This article does not include appropriations contained in special or individual articles. Um, is there a motion with respect to article? Um, is there a motion with respect to article three? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, would the uh, board like to address the operating budget first? Uh, thank you, Carl. Okay, you'll catch up. Let me start talking. Okay. Um, pertaining to Article Three, I'll present a financial overview. So, the budget that we are presenting to you all uh, for the operating budget for the current year, this year was $10,291,101. Our proposed operating budget for the coming year is $10,203,736. You'll note that's a decrease of 0.9%. Uh, the general fund budget for this, this current year was $9,993,984. And the proposed budget for next year is $9,968,063. Again, a decrease here of 0.2%. Um, the general fund excludes those following items you can see on the slide. So key changes in the proposed budget for next year. Uh, the addition of a fourth bus we have an increased population of riders, especially at the elementary level. We would like to uh, raise the level of um, FTE status to full full time for our special education director. She serves our PK through 12, all students in this district and their transitional needs for students um, who graduate out of 12th grade. Uh, increasing our superintendent time from two and a half days to three days. I that's amazing that Sydney squeezes it all in in two and a half days. There's a real need here. Um, updates to the exterior locking system and security cameras within the GVS facility. Uh, additional cameras at the recommendation of Homeland Security. Um, our locking systems are old or obsolete, which means repairs are expensive and difficult. Both would have remote access. Uh, we're proposing to replace a carpet extractor. Uh, general increases throughout the budget to accommodate for increased cost of supplies, as was mentioned before, cost of everything's going up. Uh, we have classroom FM systems that help with uh, auditory processing and uh, various audiological needs. Uh, these systems are outdated and are due to be replaced. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, additional funds for student contracted services, such as OT, PT, and counseling. So the anticipated tax impact for next year, um, the taxes will go down 31 cents per thousand dollar of home value or $31 per 100,000 of home value. Now, this is just for next year. Um, the reason the taxes will go down is as Sydney alluded to earlier, the uh, swept tax changes, these are statewide um, tax uh, policy. This year, they have voted to um, reduce uh, the swept uh, tax burden on towns. So um, our tax burden for but uh, the, this year's swept contribution to our budget is 695,379. Um, and last year, uh, sorry, I just misspoke. This year, it says last year on the slide, but this current year is at a million and next year will be um, slightly lower. That's our tax burden related to swept. So this will be reflected in all the school tax rates going forward. And this is one year only. I know I didn't, I flipped my logic there a little bit, but I hope that was relatively clear. Christy. Christy. Do you have your slide? Yeah. This off. We expect that you're aware that our school was named a Blue Ribbon School of Excellence by the US Department of Education last year. While we've long taken pride in our school standards of excellence, we're honored and proud to be recognized nationally. 
we on to the next. This slide identifies the major criteria by which schools were evaluated for the Blue Ribbon Award. I'll comment briefly on these. Um, consistent performance on the statewide assessment. Uh, many of you parents probably know that year after year, GVS students rank above the state average in terms of scoring as proficient or higher on the statewide assessment tests. Uh, progress among identified scrub subgroups facing special challenges. GVS is staffed with a full complement of specialists to address a range of special needs. These professionals coordinate with classroom teachers and education support professionals. Uh, documentation of our school's pathways to achievement, including our response to the pandemic. Our faculty and staff have established data-driven support systems that track students' progress on an ongoing basis. They strive for continuous improvement so that all our kids can reach their potential. Last but not least, there's the school's response to the pandemic. We've had our stresses, strains, and differences of opinions on protocols in in-person versus remote learning. The Progress Monitoring Committee managed to navigate our school through this difficult period and continues to do so. It does indeed take a village. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Kristen Reed for a presentation of the Blue Ribbon School plaque. Thank you. I am honored to be able to make this presentation. From day one, I have shared that earning the National Blue Ribbon Award of Excellence in Education has been a whole community accomplishment. It truly does take a village and all of Grantham, students, staff, board members, families, and community members have had a hand in helping GVS be the school that we are. With that said, I would like to invite any staff members that are here tonight to stand. Together with pride, we present to the Grantham School Board the blue ribbon plaque we received from the United States Department of Education. <laughs> it reads, in recognition of Grantham Village School, Grantham, New Hampshire, exemplary high-performing National Blue Ribbon School 2021. A special thank you to the Grantham School Board for working for and supporting the learning and growth of the children in Grantham. And just an um, update on um, academic achievement at, at GVS. Um, here's the latest data on the statewide assessment. Um, and the graph shows how GVS students compared to statewide averages in proficiency in English language arts, that's on the left, math and science uh, in 2021. The percent of GVS students scoring proficient or higher is shown in blue, and the statewide averages are shown in orange. So are there any uh, questions or comments regarding Article 3, the, the general budget? Um, if so, please approach the mic, make sure the mic is turned on, there should be a green light, and speak directly into the mic. Thanks. 
I'm Robert Meyer, 11 Turnbuckle. Um, my question has to do with the state's uh, recent passage concerning the uh, vouchers for private schools. And I'm just curious how many students in the Grantham district have left and taken advantage of that program. And as a result, what's been the associated loss in state support to our school? Currently, we've only had one student take advantage of a voucher and that student has actually returned to public school since the start of the voucher. Good. Hello. Uh, too short. You, you, can, uh, you can move the mic upward, maybe. Does that help? Uh, Liz Borger, 14 Beaver Fells Glen. <laughs> okay. I, I'm a teacher. I don't need this. Um, I wanted to, this is really intimidating. Um, Liz Borger, 14 Beaver Fells Glen, Grantham. Um, I have a couple of things and I have a question for Sydney. I wanted to, it really warms my heart, staff, um, to see that GVS has just continued on the trajectory from the eight years ago when my youngest child and I left here. Um, a thank you. And um, parents, you got to keep coming and you got to bring more people every year. I'm telling you, been here, done that. You need more people. Um, Sydney, my question for you, can you talk to us more about the full-time special ed director? Because, and, it, and then in your response, what is the current special ed director? The current time? special ed director is a 0.5 FTE. So it's technically a half-time position right now. And we've been tracking this pretty carefully for a few years. And um, while some positions, in my opinion, can really be part-time. Like I honestly believe the superintendent position outside of pandemic can be a part-time position, even though it's a K through 12 district. The special education director is really always pre-K through 12. So when we're looking at the number of students we have, we have a similar percentage to most schools in the area as a full district position. Um, so we really, tracked it and felt that that really needed to be a full-time position because the same work is being done for all of our kids all the way through. I hope that, does that answer what you were curious about? Okay. I would just add just on to that. I know uh, our population of students has grown pretty, um, we've seen growth over the last few years. And we've also seen with that growth, increased need for the special ed director to have more hands-on time with families. Um, and the board looked at, do we have a special ed director and a, a, another position that would act as a liaison as our students move to the middle and high school? Um, we discussed that as a possibility um, and having one special ed director who does pre-K through those transitions after 12th grade made the most sense um, for what we were looking for. And we also know that some of our largest classes are still within Grantham Village School. And one of the highest need points for the special ed director are working with families and students as they transition out of Grantham Village School. So we have some big classes of students coming who the special ed director is going to be having to do those more of those transition services have those meetings with Lebanon, with the middle school and the high school. So there's just going to be an exponential growth of what we were already seeing in terms of the time commitment for that position. And Hill, 53 Bright Slope. Can you pull up the last slide with the test scores? That. I think those kids deserve a new playground. I <laughs> <laughs> and I think those teachers deserve a lot of gratitude and a beer. <laughs> Any other comments or are you ready for the question on Article 3? Okay. 
I'm going to conduct a voice vote with respect to Article 3. If you are in favor of adopting Article 3 as written, please say aye. aye. And if you are opposed to Article 3, please say nay. Okay. Article 3 has been adopted by a unanimous voice vote, and I so declare. Moving on to Article 4. To approve cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement. To see if the Grantham School District will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Grantham School Board and the Grantham Education Association, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits during the current staff year. Fiscal year 22-23, $129,878 increase. 23-24, $118,971 increase. 2024 to 2025, $118,181 increase. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of $129,878 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels. The total cost over the three year period equals $367,030. Is there a motion with respect to Article 4? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Would the board wish to address Article 4? Yes, we would. So just to give the town a little flavor of what are the proposed changes within the new negotiated CBA, um, a lot of cleanup language over past practices to reflect what we're currently doing. Obviously, these are multi-year agreements and things ebb and flow. Um, defining current positions in the CBA, we're not adding any new positions. It's just a clarification of existing positions and titles. Uh, additional pay for paraeducators who cover for classroom teachers. Uh, I think we all know, given COVID over the last couple of years, what, uh, what paraeducators have been doing in our classrooms. Increase in course and conference reimbursements amounts as well for our educating staff. And again, I'd just like to throw a word out to our staff and you know, the Blue Ribbon Staff of Excellence. Um, you know, I think everyone would agree that our staff has done an amazing job over very challenging times uh, over the last few years. Um, their collaboration and dedications throughout the pandemic to their community and our kids. Connecting with families, oh, that was pretty loud. Uh, <laughs> connecting with families and uh, kids and families, you know, keeping those relationships going while you were doing remote learning um, and all the struggles that have come with that. And again, just a big thank you to our entire staff um, for all the work they've put in. Um, not just over the last couple of years, but, you know, especially the last couple of years. So a summary of the proposed increases for years 22 through 25. Professional staff, you know, we're, we're proposing a 2.5% increase um, in each year for the next three years. Educational support staffs, we're recommending a 4% increase for next year, followed by a 2.5% increase in years 23 and 24. And again, two and a half percent increase in years 24 to 25. Food service and custodian staffs, um, we're proposing a 5% increase each year over the next three years. Sort of how this all shakes down from a tax impact perspective, um, the new CBA for the 2022-23 year will cost about 24 cents per thousand or $24 per hundred thousand assessed value. When you combine that with the operating budget, um, we are still showing a seven cent per thousand reduction in the 22-23 budget year or, you know, a seven dollar per thousand dollar assessment. Are there any questions with respect to uh, Article 4? 
I want to, this is Claudia Cousins Hoffman from uh, 784 Old Farms Road. I uh, want to say thank you again to everybody. Um, and as somebody who works at DHMC and who has had to um, rely on the National Guard for <laughs> um, uh, the support for our food service, um, I think that a 5% uh, addition to janitorial and food service is minimal to actually having anybody. There is a huge uh, lack of um, ability to get people and we want the best people here taking care of our kids. So I think that makes a huge amount of sense unless you guys want to volunteer or get the National Guard in here. Um, other than that, thank you again to all the students and the teachers. Lori McClory, 38 Brookridge Drive. Not a question, just a comment that with the, with the playground information, we talked about the impact at a $400,000 home and the last two Warren articles, we're talking about the impact on $100,000. So I think in the future, if we're gonna do 400, we should do 400. If we're gonna do 100, we need to do 100. Thanks. <laughs> Are there other comments or questions regarding article four? Sounds like you are ready for the vote. So all who are in favor of adopting Article 4 as written, please signify by saying aye. aye. And all who are opposed say nay. And Article 4 is adopted by a unanimous voice vote, and I so declare. Now, just to let you know, um, that ballot box needs to remain open and we need to remain in session until 8.28. So we have I one have, article left. I have one more, well, two brief well, things. So. Well, well, we're gonna <laughs> get to Article sometime. 5. We're gonna get to Article 5 here. Um, article 5 is to transact any further business to come before this annual meeting, um, which is uh, traditionally used to do things like congratulating people who have served for a period of time on, on the board. Um, so I will ask if there's a motion to adopt Article 5. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Um, so Article 5 is on the floor. Would anyone like to address Article 5? Brittany. I would love to. So as we close the meeting tonight, I would like to share a few words of gratitude on behalf of the board to two individuals who have contributed so much to the work of the board during recent years and are concluding their work with the board this year. So first to Seth Carl, one of our inaugural student school board liaisons. The board is deeply grateful to you for not only be, being willing to step up and be one of the first students to hold this role, but to do so in very uncertain times. You have provided thoughtful insight and reflection to the board, helping inform and shape the work that we do. Your willingness to serve in this role helps the board as we strive to find ways to live up to the axiom, nothing about us without us. Thank you for your time, dedication, and involvement with the Grantham School Board. Good luck on your next adventures, and we can't wait to see where your journey takes you. Is, I don't, is, I didn't see. I'm not sure if, is Seth, are you here? <laughs> no, he might be online, I'll check there. <laughs> anyway, Seth, we have a thank you for you and a going away to college gift to, you know, all those things that you might need to buy. So thank you so much. And to Christine Conroy. Christine has served on the Grantham School Board since 2015. And while we would prefer her work with us to never be done, we can confidently say that she has done so much. Christine joined the board midterm and immediately demonstrated that she had much to give to the Grantham School District. Christine has served on negotiating committees, strategic planning committees, hiring committees, and most re recently as secretary of the board. 
Christine's commitment to detail shows up not just in her impeccable ability to copy, edit, and proofread, but perhaps more importantly in her willingness to go deep into difficult conversations, ask meaningful questions, draw important comparisons, and consider multiple perspectives. While we and our auditors, lawyers, professional organizations, everyone, will certainly miss your ability to parse verbiage, we will deeply feel the loss of your experience and your voice on the board. Thank you, Christine. It has been a pleasure to serve this community alongside you. Should have written more so that we had I had more things to 20 more minutes of speaking. <laughs> That's it. I um we, we, we cannot we cannot count the ballots until after 828. Um, so you're, um, uh, I, I, do, I don't have any kind of an entertainment program set up. So should we uh, live stream the State of the Union stuff? <laughs> so I will, um, I will reconvene the meeting in order to have a motion to um, adjourn, but we can't do that until after the hour is up. So please remember to vote if you haven't done so already. Welcome to do a karaoke presentation if you would like. Okay. It's been one hour and one minute since the ballot was opened. And I declare that the ballot box is now closed and we will proceed with counting the ballots. Bond vote have been counted. Uh, there were uh, 124 yeses and there were 24 noes. So the article is passed by more than the three-fifths uh, requirement. And I so declare. So Karen's gone to get a- An envelope? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Okay, Mr. Islander, that's a, is it seconded? That, that's a non-debatable non motion. So all in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. We stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>